Good morning. I am, I am Linda Callahan, and I am co-chair of the Board of Trustees of this Unitarian Universalist Society. I use she, her pronouns. Welcome to you, old friends and new, young and old, in the Zoom and in the sanctuary. You are an essential part of our celebration today, whether today is your first or your thousandth Sunday in our midst, we are stronger because you are with us. We are one people of many beliefs, many origins, sexualities, and genders. We are all growing, all learning, all loved. Just as you are, you are welcome here. As part of our effort to seek feedback on the governance of our congregation, you are invited to join us during the first 15 minutes of any regular meeting of the board or chatting with us during the social hour or by using the email address board at uusocietyamherst.org. We are grateful to be in community with you. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Allison Bull, and I am this morning's worship associate. I use she, her pronouns. As drops of water come together from the sky, from deep within the earth, run across the land, run together, form puddles, streams, rivers, ponds, lakes, seas, watersheds, oceans, we come together, pay tribute as tributaries, map the rivers of our hearts. For we are greater when together. <clears throat> we come to connect to our power like a mighty flood. We come to be refreshed like a cool drink. We come to find comfort like a hot bath. We come to be part of something bigger, like the capillary hydration of the tallest trees. We come to know our deepest nature, to know and be known in this place, coming together, called by hope for the future, called by love for this life and our fellow travelers, called by our own worthiness and the worthiness of all people. Come, let us worship. I invite you to say the chalice lighting words with me. We light this flame to invite a world of peace where we heal the wounds, where we share what we have with one another, where justice is another word for relationship, and we listen for what love has to say. I invite you to rise in body and spirit to sing our first hymn, Peace Like a River. And the words are on the screen and the paper order of service. with all of our hopes for who we will be and, and will make this place, our congregation adopted a covenant to hold our promises to one another. I invite you to recite the covenant with me on the screen and in your order of service. Love is the spirit of this community. We dwell together in peace we seek truth and justice in love. We honor everyone's worth and dignity, and we do the work of building the beloved community in our world. I'm the Reverend Rachel Hayes, minister of this congregation. I use she, her pronouns. And it's really, really good to be back. Yeah. <laughs> 
If we trace the water ritual that we celebrate today back to its original source, we go back to 1980, to the Women and Religion Continental Convocation of Unitarian Universalists. Carolyn McDade, the composer who wrote some of our congregation's most beloved hymns, and Lucille Shucklongview, a powerful feminist lay leader, devised a ritual where eight women from around this continent brought water from their distant places to the convocation in East Lansing, Michigan, called Coming Home Like Rivers to the Sea. They write, water is more than simply a metaphor. It is elemental and primary, calling forth feelings of awe and reverence, acknowledging that the ocean is considered by many to be the place from which all life on our planet came. It is the womb of life, and that amniotic waters surround each of us prenatally. We now realize that this worship service was for us a new story of creation. We choose water as our symbol of empowerment. Congregations recognize the power in this ritual of the many waters and experiences poured into a common bowl. They began to use the convocation's water ritual to celebrate their fall in gathering. Today, we celebrate the water ritual almost 44 years after that first convocation to celebrate our own coming together. If you brought water from a place in your life, I invite you to hold it in your hands. And if you plan to pour from one of the water pitchers on our altar, call to mind a time that water has touched your life in the last year. And if you're with us online, I invite you to take some water too. Whether collected from a special source or the faucet closest to where you are right now and hold your water in your hands. I'm gonna get my water too. Imagine the place that the water comes from. What is meaningful to you about that place? Was anyone there with you? Do you remember sounds or smells or things someone said? Do any feelings come up in connection with this water? Take a breath. When you're ready, let it go. If the water comes from a place of strength, share that strength with the congregation today. If the water comes from hardship and struggle, allow the congregation to hold part of that burden. If the water comes from wellsprings of tradition, Deepen our streams with that continuity. If the water comes from rains of change, share some of that fluidity with us. If the water comes from a clean start, share some of its freshness. As the music plays, I invite you in the sanctuary to come forward and pour some water, just a little bit, into the bowl. Online, pour your, your water into some earth, whether directly into the land or a house plant, or set it aside to evaporate in its own time. Many Unitarian Universalist congregations are celebrating this ritual today across the continent and around the world. And we, and we know that all of the planet's waters are connected in one water cycle. Let us share our water.
to bless our water this morning. I'd like to invite any of the kids forward who want to come be part of the blessing. And we're going to sing Pool of Love, which maybe some of you, you don't know. have to know it to do this. We will. Yeah. So I invite you, so any of the kids and anybody else, to hold your hands toward the bowl as we sing this song. And Kat is going to lead it for us. So I'll sing it first once, and you can listen, and then we'll sing it back together. The last line we'll say twice. May the pool of love we have gathered here spread its wings and fly far and near from the depths of our hearts to the farthest star may our love bless everyone may the pool of love we have gathered here spread its wings and fly far and near from the depths of to the farthest star, may our love bless everyone. May the pool of love we have gathered here spread its wings and fly far and near. From the depths of our hearts to the farthest star, may our love bless everyone. May this love bless
we begin every year with this ritual. We pour our water together in celebration of the simple fact that all of our journeys have led us here to this beloved room, those here in person and those joining online. We bring water from faraway travels and favorite local swimming holes and from our kitchen sinks. This water, which is so free and so priceless, we don't take it for granted. We don't come together in this ritual to celebrate something perfect and pure. We come together because whatever comes, we know that we need one another in this journey. The local farms that were flooded last summer have only begun a long recovery. And there have been more disastrous floods this year in many places, including Brazil and Pakistan and hurricanes in the Caribbean and the lack of water too, or the lack of safe water threatens so many lives around the world with drought, with disease, and without outright thirst. We share our water as a symbol of how much we need one another. This water holds the love of our congregation. After today, I will filter and boil it and save it in my office for rituals. We use this water for child dedications and naming ceremonies, for blessings, for other rituals where we want the full love of the congregation to be part of the blessing. The words we sang over our water, may our love bless everyone. I really do pray that. What if this water were just the beginning of us pooling our love to bless everyone? What would be possible? Our congregation does more than we'll ever be able to track our direct impact. We can count breakfasts served and voter engagement postcards written, dedicated offerings shared, casseroles delivered, visits made, but we'll likely never know most of the ripples that we make in the world. Some things we take on faith. Not faith as a banner to wave, but as a choice to trust in one another that the things we do make a difference. What blessings would you ask of this water? And then what's the first droplet of an action to begin to make this blessing happen? Does it begin with a conversation or some reflection? Does it begin with flowing into a larger stream already in motion? This pool of love is an act of faith that all of those things are possible. From the depths of our heart to the farthest star, may our love bless everyone. Amen.
This prayer was written by the Reverend Ellie Kilpatrick. Spirit and creator of life, O oh precious water, you are the witness to everything. From the beginning of this earth as a water planet following millions of years of rain, to the microorganisms that sprung, to the complex life that followed, all the way through to the humans that evolved. You have watched unity and wars, our disasters and our greatest joys. You lived in the uterus along growing fetuses, helping them develop. You entered our bodies in the midst of our worst moments when we finally remembered to stop and have a drink of water. You cooled us down when we were overheating. You warmed us when we were cold. You cleaned us and you surrounded us with what we needed, no matter who we were, where we came from, or what we'd done. You are life. And we pray to learn from the wisdom of water, to help each other grow, and to be there for each other in our worst moments to cool each other down and warm each other up, to clean the muck that prevents us from knowing our deepest selves, and to surround each other with love, no matter who we are, where we came from, or what we've done. We are witnesses to this world, like water. But just as water is a creator of life, so too are we creators of paths for life to follow. May we remember that our paths are united by one common source, and our spiritual waters, love, will return to each other once more. Blessed be, and amen. I invite you to remain seated for our meditation hymn, Voice Still and Small. Thank mm -hmm. you. join me in the words for extinguishing our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you all for being here once again, or for the first time. We have poured ourselves into this place. As we sing our closing song today, I offer a few ways to participate. You are welcome to stay right where you are, to know that you are held in the love of this congregation, or you are welcome to rise and move into a circle along the outer aisles and form a container for all that we hope our circle will be. Place your hands over your heart or reach out to the person beside you as we sing our beloved closing song.
earth with these words from the prophet Audre Lorde. And I dream of us coming together encircled, driven not only by love, but by a lust for a working tomorrow. The flights of this journey, mapless, uncertain, and necessary as water. Go in peace.